And let's start with what's happening at that hospital. Israeli forces have said that they are engaged in intense fighting around Al Shifa Hospital, the largest medical facility in Gaza. I know that you say that the hospital sits on top of a Hamas command and control center, but of course there are also patients, civilians sheltering in that complex getting treatment. So how do you intend to go after Hamas without putting sick and injured civilians in that hospital at more risk than they already are? Well, we've called to evacuate all the patients from that hospital. And in fact, uh, 100 or so have already been evacuated. I've called for field hospitals. The French president has sent a floating hospital ship. I've asked the uh, Emirates to uh, send a field hospital. They have, uh, and other countries have done the same. I expect the UN to build this. So there's no reason why we just can't take the patients out of there uh, instead of letting Hamas use it as a command center for terrorism for the rockets that they fire against Israel, for the terror tunnels that they use to kill Israeli civilians. Remember, uh, Dana, let's keep this in focus. Just imagine what would happen if the United States were attacked viciously by 29 11s, 20, that's the proportionate number, 50,000 Americans killed, 10,000 Americans held hostage, including babies, elderly, women, children. Uh, 10,000 rockets falling on your, your cities. That's the number of rockets that are falling all the time on our cities. May fall during this interview, in fact, and we'll have to go to a shelter. That's what's happening. So what would America do? It would take all its force and go after these killers. And what if these killers embed themselves in hospitals, in schools, in UN facilities? You do everything in your power to get the civilians out, which is what right. we're doing. We call them to leave, but you certainly wouldn't give immunity to the terrorists. So we're obviously treading carefully when it comes to hospitals, but we're also not going to give immunity to the terrorists. And so far, even though Hamas has tried to prevent the civilians from leaving, uh, hundreds of thousands so just, have left, sometimes having to go through Hamas gunpoints and gunfire just to be that clear, wants to sir, keep them in harm's way. Just to be clear, sir, sir, Israel will aid, help these civilians who are quite sick and inside these hospitals come out not just in al-Shifa, but there are other hospitals uh, where this is happening. Yes. Yes, we're telling them to leave. And in telling fact, them or helping them? Dana safe, helping them by creating safe corridors. So we have designated routes to a safe zone south of Gaza City where there's no uh, fighting. And we're telling them, go ahead, move. And by the way, 70,000 have moved three days ago. I think 50,000 moved yesterday. More will move today. We want all the civilians to be removed out of harm's way, and Hamas is doing everything in their power to keep them in harm's way. Do you they believe, put missiles below. Yes, go ahead. Do you believe ahead. that there are hostages below that hospital, Israeli or American hostages? Well, I'm not going to go into uh, the intelligence picture we have, but, uh, you know, this, this, uh, there's been this vicious thing. They take hostages. Imagine a baby is, is held hostage. Who takes a baby hostage? Yeah, I don't know if you have children, Donna. I'm sure your camera crew has them. We all have children. What is this taking children hostages, threatening to kill them? I mean, this is savagery of the highest order. So obviously, we're doing everything in our power to achieve two things. One, destroy Hamas, because without it, none of us have a future. And it's not only our war, it's your war, too. It's the battle of civilization against barbarism. And if we don't win here, this scourge will, will pass. The Middle East will, will pass to other places. Yeah. Middle East will fall. Europe is next. You'll be next. And I, but it's the, the first goal is to de destroy Hamas, and the second goal is to bring back our hostages. We're trying to do both. Yeah, so those are completely understandable goals, goals that the United States uh, very much supports, understanding that Hamas is a barbaric terrorist organization. But Israel is not Hamas. And the United States also makes very clear that democracies have to do better. Uh, the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, said uh, that far too many Palestinian civilians have been killed. What is your response to that? I think any civilian uh, loss is a tragedy. And it should, the blame should be placed squarely on Hamas because it prevents them from leaving the war zone, sometimes at gunpoint. It fired on the safe zone and the safe corridor that we uh, enacted the other day to prevent Palestinians from leaving harm's way. It puts rockets inside uh, schools, hospitals. It has tunnels below children's beds. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. Absolutely. So obviously we but can't it, give them immunity. But because Israel isn't Hamas, is Israel doing everything possible to take that into consideration? 
Yes, and avoid yes, civilian Dan, and death. more than that. And more than that. We're trying to minimize civilian casualties. As a result of our ground action, I think the number of civilian casualties is actually being reduced because people are heeding our calls to leave the area and defying Hamas's attempt to keep them there. Uh, and we'll do everything in our power to do that. But, you know, the one example I could give you is this. Look, these savages, they perpetrated the worst horrors on Jews since the Holocaust. The German Chancellor Schultz called them the new Nazis. Well, look at the old Nazis. The Allies were attacked by Hitler, and so they invaded France and then Germany. And when they did that, they went into the cities. They had to fight the German army that was often embedded in civilian in the, in the, in the cities, yeah. in civilian neighborhoods. And many civilians were killed. So who was the blame laid on to? Did they say, well, the Nazis are war the Allies? are wrong, the Allies should stop fighting, or they said, look, use force as judiciously as you can, mm -hmm. but don't give the Nazis any refuge. Defeat the Nazis, which is what we're doing. Prime Minister. We're using force in the most judicious way, but we have to defeat these new Nazis, and we will, for our sake, for your sake, too. I want to ask about the hostages. Thousands of Israelis, including families of hostages, rallied this weekend right across the street from where you are right now. They're very frustrated that they're not getting more information from you on where their loved ones are, believe that uh, the government, your government is not doing enough to get them back. What do you say to them? It's understandable. They're under tremendous distress. They're under just torture. Uh, you can imagine that. You have your, your, your father, your, your, your husband, your son, your daughter taken by these savages. Are you doing uh, enough? And held it. Uh, we're doing everything we can around the clock, and I can't, you know, talk about it. I personally met with uh, the hostage uh, families, uh, families of hostages several times, and it's it just tears your heart out. But yes, we're doing uh, everything and many things that I can't say here, obviously. But we, this is one of our two uh, war goals. I mean, one is to destroy Hamas, and the second is to bring back our hostages, and we'll do everything we can. And we think the entire world should join us. Demand from the Red Cross that it demand visits to the hostages. Demand the unconditional release of the hostages. Say that this is barbarism that is unaccepted, unacceptable. I'd like to see the UN. I'd like to see the UN Secretary General, who basically laid the blame on Israel, lay the blame on these savages. To demand that they obey international law because Israel is fighting according to international Sir, law. The Israeli army is doing an exemplary job trying to minimize security. Uh, civilian casualties and maximize the terrorist uh, casualties. But we need the international community not to give sucker support mm -hmm. and moral support and legitimacy to sheer evil that Hamas represents. Support Israel. Attack Hamas. Prime Minister Netanyahu, the, uh, one of the questions right now is when it comes to hostages is whether there can be a negotiation that work towards, works towards a deal to free large groups of hostages in exchange for a sustained days-long pause in fighting. Is that acceptable to you? And if so, how long of a pause would Israel be willing to allow? I said that we're going to pursue the battle to destroy Hamas to its end. But I also said that the only ceasefire that we would consider uh, is one in which we have our hostages released. Uh, and that remains true. doesn't mean that we can't give a uh, humanitarian pause for a few hours in a, in a place, a specific time and place where we want to have a humanitarian corridor uh, 